Okay, I'm working on a dining table. Right now, this is the underside. You can see the amazing figure in the wood. It's quite nice. This is walnut. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be cutting relief cuts in the bottom of the table to keep the tabletop from cupping. So I did some research on the internet. It doesn't seem like a lot of people do it. But I live in Calgary, there's a lot of moisture changes throughout the year, there's a huge range, and these boards are really wide, and this board in particular has the pith running right through it, so that's the very center of the log. So these are going to tend to want to warp over time, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relieve some of the stress by putting a cut down the table, not on the edge, just up to the edge. What that do what that will do is it will relieve some of the stress from the boards to keep them from cupping as much. What it will also do is it will allow my C channel that I'm going to put on after this to keep the table more flat. So I'm going to get my track saw and I'm going to cut from about here down to the other edge, leaving about six inches on either end. I'm going to cut seven eighths of an inch deep and I'm going to do that on all three boards. Okay. My track saw is set to about an inch deep, so that would be the depth of my cut. I have my track centered on each of the boards, so this is the center of the board. Number one. Make sure you have the bottom of the table up so you're not cutting the top. Number two, make sure you leave some nice space. You don't want this cut coming off the edge because you'll see it, okay? Cut all the way to the other end, leave a gap. Now, again, you can see the pith there. So this is the very center of the tree. And you can see where the pith travels along here. You can see it surfacing in certain areas, like right here, that's your pith. So what this is gonna do is gonna relieve a little bit of stress because if you look at wood, so this guy's right in the center. So this is gonna to wanna to kind of peel apart. Now, if you look at this piece, it's curved. So you have the curve of the wood like this. And what happens is the wood wants to make itself flat. So this is gonna to wanna to peel out and curve. Okay, C channel is called C channel because it's a C, shaped like a C. So what this is, is you have a flat piece of steel and then two edges to give this lateral strength. So now this is a very rigid piece of steel in this direction. It won't want to flex up, um, back and forth. So this will not want to bow. So this is a very strong piece of metal. The other thing you'll notice are there are oval holes in here. These are where the bolts will go through the C channel into the tabletop. They will lock into brass bushings and these are slots because it will allow the table to expand and contract and the bolts will not get stuck in the hole so they'll be able to slide through these slots and not get stuck. So the table could expand and contract without hitting any bolts. So, the very first thing we have to do is we actually have to build a track for the C-channel to sit in. So what we need to do is we need to router out a shape like this in the table. So what we do is we got to pick our spot on the table where we want these to exist. Then we have to router a line for this part of the bar and then router a line for this part of the bar so it will sit down inside of the table. Now the other thing is you can leave it proud. So we could just make two router lines and then drop it in, but then this will stick up the thickness of the steel, which I think is about, it's almost a quarter. So we don't necessarily want to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna router a line
for one part, router the other line for the other part of the C, and then we're gonna router out a space for this to be recessed. Now, an important thing to realize in this situation is how thick is your table and how deep is your C channel. This C channel is one inch. My table is one and seven eighths. So that will work out. I will have to router one inch deep in total and then recess it in and that leaves seven eighths at the top. So in this situation, it's a very long table. This one is 87 and a half inches long and I have three C channels. So I'm gonna put one at each end and I'm gonna put one in the center. Now you also have to think about where your leg's going to go. So I have a set of legs that I put just past here at about 16 inches. So the legs are gonna be right about here. So I'm gonna put the C channel back. Okay, so what I've done now is I've made a line right here where I want the edge of the legs to be. So this is 16 inches from the edge of the table. I just think that's a nice distance. And I want the edge of this leg to be at 16. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just probably pick maybe the center here. I'm gonna measure out the center of this, so about the eight inch mark is where I'm gonna put the C channel. My table is 44 inches wide and this C channel is 40 inches wide. So I've got two inches on each side, so I measured it out. It's live edge, so it's kinda not perfect, but I picked the best center I could find. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace out the C channel to give myself some guidelines of where I need to router. So what I've done is I've traced out where the C channel will be. Now, this is the outer edge. You're not gonna want this to be super tight. Like you don't want this to be squished in there. You want there to be a little bit of, little bit of play. And my pen obviously is on the outside of the metal, so it should be okay. But what I'm gonna do, essentially, is I wanna take the thickness of this part, which is I think about a quarter, I'll measure it exactly, but then I wanna router out that width from here to here. So I need to hit this edge so it'll fit, but then I need to make the edge for that C channel. And obviously on the other side, I have to do the same thing. So we're gonna run the router along this edge. And we're gonna router out a width enough to accept the width of this C channel and accept the total width of the piece, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a jig for running a router across that will use um, basically a straight bit and a brass bushing up against a guide. Okay, so I'll show you how I do that. So I just want to quickly maybe draw an image to show what's happening with the C channel. So you have your table top and your table bottom. And so if this is the bottom here, the C channel is just gonna run across the table. Now in cross section, what is going to happen is you'll have the bottom of the table and the C channel is shaped like this. So what we're doing is we're going to router in two notches. Okay. And so that'll fit these two ends of the C channel. And then what we do is we actually will router out this piece right here. And so this is 3 16 and 3 16 So this will be, basically I'll make it about a quarter wide because that's the best size for the router bit that allow, allow a little bit of wiggle room. And then we'll just take a, a flat bit across the top and just etch this out. So it's gonna be basically routered out like this in the table. So this C channel will fit right into this uh, notch and it'll sink below the bottom of the table so it won't be proud. This is the bit I'm going to be using for it. It's a quarter inch straight bit. And we're going to be going down about an inch just over. So the edge of the C channel is a total of one inch high. So that's this part of the C channel right here is one inch. So I'm going to go about probably a 16th above that. So I'll go 17 sixteenths deep with this bit. And I'm gonna do that so this doesn't hit the table. Like I don't want the C channel to hit here and stop. I want this part here to be the contact because I'm gonna end up putting a bolt through here and it's gonna thread in to a brass bushing underneath. So I wanna make sure that this is the point of contact 
not this. So earlier we traced on the size of the C channel here. So that is the shape of it that goes all the way across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this Fest Tool track to use as my straight edge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my router so the bit is gonna be cutting on the inside of this and on the inside of this. Okay, so I have my straight bit in my router. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the edge of the router bit on the line and I'm gonna line it up with my track. So I'll show you how to do that. So basically, I'm gonna take and drop my router down so the bit is just touching the top of the table. I'm gonna lock the router. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to the line. I'm gonna find out where that sits and I'm gonna push this up against the back. There. Okay, so now I have my router bit lined up on the line here. I'll zoom in to show you better. But then I have the router pushed up against the track. So now they're basically flush against one another. And I'm gonna tighten the track to the table. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. If you look right in there, you can see the router bit is right at the edge inside of the line. Okay, so I'll show you over here too. So that router bit is just on the inside of that line. So what it's going to do is it's going to cut a quarter inch rabbit all the way across following that line. I'm not going to do this in the full uh, 17 sixteenths pass. I'm going to do it probably in two or three. So I'll go down maybe about a half an inch, do a pass, come back, do it again. Okay, so I'm going to start with my first pass. Okay, so I've changed out my bit. I now have a half inch spiral bit in my router. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use it to trim this out, this whole area in here, so it's just hand work. Just being really careful along these edges. And I'm gonna cut out 3 16 which is the thickness of the C channel. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test fit the C channel fits in nicely and the point of that notching out is so that C channel sits nice and low in there so it's not going to be protruding up. The bolt heads will stick up a tiny bit but not too much so this, this is great. We are ready to put in the brass inserts to attach the C channel. The very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark where my bolts need to exist. I'm gonna put a bolt in the middle and on the two sides, okay? So I'm just gonna mark the holes. That's where I need them to be. Pull this out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bolt in the middle of each one of these slots. So again, the table can expand and contract because the bolt will slide in this loop as the wood expands and contracts through moisture changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use brass inserts and a bolt. So we'll start putting those brass inserts in now. What a brass bushing is, is it is an insert that will be drilled into the table top on the bottom and then a bolt will thread into there. So what'll happen is I'll have the brass bushing in, you put the C channel on top and then you'll bolt it on. And the bolt is smaller than the hole and it's allowed to slide as the wood expands and contracts. So a little bit closer here. So the bolt can just slide back and forth, okay? 
So what's important here is I bought these little kits and in the kit you get a drill bit that fits the brass bushing so it drills out a hole just large enough so the threads are all that's really going to be catching the wood so it doesn't bind too much. It also comes with a piece that you, is used to screw in the bit. So this brass bushing will fit on the bit and it clicks into place. There you go. So it click to, clicks into place and you can thread it in. Also, you see a little bit of wax here. What I do is I put a little bit of wax on the threads. I actually just use the stuff I, I use on cutting boards and then I'll thread it in afterwards. So I'll show you how I do this. So I'm going to start by drilling my holes and I've actually marked on the drill bit how deep I need to go. So there's a line on my drill bit, you can see it right there. That is the depth of the bit and I give it a little bit extra. So I give about an eighth beyond that because if the bolt goes past this, it will bind on the wood. So I want to make sure that this doesn't bottom out and the bolt doesn't bottom out. So then I have my brass bushing and I just take a little bit of wax and put it on the threads. This will just help it go into the hole and not bind. Okay. Now when I'm doing this, I want to make sure I'm putting even pressure down because you don't want it to go sideways. These things can get tippy and then they'll be crooked and your bolt won't thread in. So be sure to make sure you have a flat contact and push down with quite a bit of force. Okay. That's how it sits in. Okay, so I have all three brass bushings in now. We can put the C channel in. Okay, and now I can start threading the bolts. I've got the C channel bolted into the table, and now what I'm doing is I'm actually mounting the legs. These legs plus the thickness of the table was not high enough. I like my tables to be about 30 inches high at the top. So I actually have to put a bit of a buffer in there to add height to the table. So I've created a piece of wood that is the thickness required to get the tabletop, the legs to 30 inches. So this, I actually have brass inserts put in and I can bolt these into the table, okay? So that will hold the wood in place on the table. So these three large bolts that go into the brass inserts. But what I need to do is I actually have to hold the legs to this piece of wood. Now, the issue with this piece of wood is if I was to put brass bushings in, it might crack the wood because I need to put four very large holes in there. And I wasn't really comfortable with that. So I found another solution that I really like. So. There is a system, I get these at Lee Valley Tools, where you get like a hex head bolt and you get these inserts that are threaded. And these are interesting because they actually go between two pieces of wood. So a lot of other inserts you screw into the wood and then you bolt things in. But these go on the opposite side. So this will lock into the back of the wood and then you put the bolt through the wood and thread it into this, okay? So what I did is I measured out from the legs where I needed the holes to exist. And then I drilled a hole through that was large enough for the bolt to pass through and for the nut to sit in. I do a bit of a recess in here and then I put the bolts, or sorry, these nuts in the back. So that's how they look sitting on the back. They sit just, I put them just under. So I had to take a Forstner bit, make a bit of a recess, drill a hole, and then I pound these in. Now what happens is, these bolts will now thread into here. Okay, so it's a really interesting system. I've used it all the time. I really, really like it. Um, and what'll happen is the leg will sit between here. So I'll just quickly put this all together and show you how it works. <clears throat> okay, so now this is locked to the base of the table. So that's nice and solid. Now the legs, I line them up with the holes and now all I have to do is thread these bolts down into I just have to thread these bolts down into the nut 
which is sitting below, and then that'll lock the table on.